Happy Saturday, everybody. Guys, prices just dropped 1.7% in September, but crazy enough, if we use the same measurements that we used for September, we could actually see prices go up. Now, this is insane, but I'm gonna tell you why that could happen, and we're gonna talk about some of the dynamics that maybe make that uh, even potentially a misleading metric. I don't know. I'm gonna show you the data, you guys decide, but this is going to be a very thorough Nashville housing update. My name's Ethan Flynn. I'm a CPA, I'm a licensed real estate agent here in the Nashville area, and I'm not trying to get anybody to buy, but if you are planning to buy and you are cash heavy, not that I don't wanna help others, but I just don't think they should be buying right now, but if you're a cash heavy buyer or a cash buyer in the Williamson County, Franklin, Brentwood, Cool Springs area, and you wanna reach out, I'd be happy to help you or talk through what helping you would look like, and then you can decide. Now, without further ado, let's get into the data. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to show you was mortgage rates are on an absolute tear. You can see here the 10-year just hit a new 17-year high, 15-year high. I can't even do the math. Ten, I'm a, It's crazy how far back you have to go to see this high. Now, the problem is, is that drives the mortgage rates up. And of course, we see mortgage rates are on a tear. Ever since Lawrence Yoon, the chief economist of the National Association of Realtors, jinxed the mortgage rate market by saying they have peaked, mortgage rates have gone vertical up. I think Lawrence Yoon might be the Jim Cramer of real estate. Anyways, so what does this mean? You would think, I would think, like if you told me at the beginning of the year, if you told me at the beginning of the year, almost 8% mortgage rates, where's prices, Ethan? I'd be like, crash, right? Just completely tanking. We're not seeing that, guys. We are not seeing that. It's insane, okay? So let me show you what happened in August. Okay, there's three things I want you to look at here. We're going to look at inventory, we're going to look at price, and then we're going to look at closed volume. Okay, so let's look at let's look at price first. 476 down 1.7% to 468. Wow, that's a significant drop. Now you look, that takes us all the way back to April pricing. Now you remember we started the year at 450, so we're still up $18,000 and 450 was actually the trough, the bottom of this downturn and we've been going up ever since. Now we're starting a new, what I believe is a downturn, but is it, is it? Let's take a look at this chart right here. Now, I showed you this chart before. Here, I'm gonna show you the dates. The dates are down here at the bottom. Just know November 23 is right here and this is January on the other side. So this is January area, okay? So this is just a one-year chart. The reason that's important is because we kind of peaked in the middle of the summer and we've been going down ever since, but, but, Look at that orange line. That orange line is contract median list price. It's ticking back up. Now, it's ticking back up, and you gotta ask yourself, there's two ways prices can drop from here. One is, is that the gap between close price and median list price go larger, right? Because this is under contract. This is contract list price. If it grows larger, then prices could still drop even though the median price of what's under contract is going up. Now, that's possible especially because we're in the fall and there's probably more concessions. But there's a high correlation here. It's very possible that we could see prices push back up into the 470s. Now, if that happens, I'm thinking, how in the world could that happen? Well, let's take a look at a couple other dynamics here. Let me get, so we've got Davidson County, single family. Let's start with just pricing trends. This is just the median sales price. Notice it peaked in June at 510, dropped all the way down to 457, which guys, that's almost what, uh, that's a 10% drop uh, from peak, from peak. Um, and then it just kind of moseyed back up and now we're right at 500, about 2% below peak. Pretty wild. How in the world could it be there? I don't know. Let's look at another way to measure it. How about price per square foot? Now, when we look at price per square foot, we look at the median price per square foot. Again, we see it peaked in June of 22, tanked big time to 244, peaked at 283 down to 244. So you're looking at a $40 drop that's crazy in price per square foot, bounce back, and now we're kind of hovering in this area of 268, which is a low. You gotta go back to, again, February to see 268 per foot. And so we can see that the price per square foot is actually dropping, which means that home values might actually be dropping even if sales price is staying the same. Now, how could that happen? One explanation, People buying cash will pay, will get the nicer houses, but pay less per square foot for them. They could be pushing on price per square foot. That's one theory. I, and I think that's actually probably part of this. I think there's a buyer pool out there paying cash. I just hope the cash buyer buy in um, 
they actually bought up in Sumner, but we pushed on price. It, it was it was easier because of their ability to pay with cash. Got another one that we're working on. It's easier because we can push on price. So maybe you get a more expensive house at a lower valuation. One other thing I want to show you though, people say inventory is the driver of price change. And I generally agree with that, but think of it as a general rule and not a rule. Here's what I mean by that. Here's our active inventory. If we look at active inventory, it's a five-year chart. You can see Davidson County just went over 2,000 in active inventory. You have to go back to 2018, December of 2018, to see a higher active inventory in Davidson County. Now, I'd be raising red flags. And I think Davidson County is ripe for a price drop. Okay, we looked at some of the, the areas on the west side of Nashville, uh, your nation, Silver Park. They looked very soft, like something could give. But it's not really giving right now. And and inventory is up. Remember last year when inventory was up, prices were in free fall. That November peak coincided with massive drops in prices, massive drops in prices that troughed in January. You can see that's when inventory troughed. So interestingly enough, right now we're not seeing a massive drop in prices in Davidson County. Let's look at Williamson County. Actually inventory peaked in July and peaked again in October, November of last year. So we've been managing inventory here in Williamson County very well. Now, what makes this even more wild, million dollar listings, they are massively higher than they were five years ago. Now, this might make you think that million dollar listings are going to tank. And I thought that too, but that's just not happening yet. And when you look at under contract inventory, you can see the under contract inventory has been also going up along with it. Now, it has calmed down. Million dollar inventory has calmed down, but the active inventory, the price drops haven't really materialized yet. Now, let's just take a look at price per square foot. And you can see it tanked last year all the way down to 317. These are for million dollar listings and then back up and now we're at 366. So guys, listen, if you're buying a million dollar house in Williamson County, and you're below 366, you're below market on a million dollar house. Now, when you blend all of those in together, it's much lower. But my but my point is, is that there's a lot of million dollar houses you can get for like 250, 275 a square foot that is better than average. If you find one of those in a nice neighborhood and a good location, maybe it's just a little bit dated, you can, you can add value to your houses in Williamson County big time. Here, we peaked at 302 in June, and now we're down to 289. So the price per square foot is dropping. That shows you that this is a time, relatively speaking, this is a time to buy. When we look at contract volume, we can see contract volume has been dropping all year long. Sorry, let me fix this. From 3,000 down to 2,061, guys. 30% drop in contract volume. But notice it hasn't tanked at any point. It hasn't just completely fallen through the floor like it did last year it really hasn't responded the same way to mortgage rates. We're not seeing just some fallout in contract volume. Now, why does this matter? Let's go to in, let's go to closings. 2,200 closings in September. When we look at that, that's 500 less than what we had in September of last year. Guys, this is a frozen market. This is a frozen market. Remember, the population in Nashville has been booming for years, years. But we're seeing a five-year lull. I mean, like nothing on my, this is it goes back to 2018. And you can see that the close volume is just below anything that we've seen in five years. And I, you know, we could go back longer than that. We'd probably see this is a 10, 15-year low would be my conjecture. My point is, is that the population is a lot higher. So this close volume is even lower than it looks. Okay. Going into October, we could see even, we could see flat to lower close volume even in October compared to the previous years. It's just frozen solid. Higher interest rates, almost it's almost like they can't do that much more to this market uh, from a standpoint of slowing people down. There's just, it's almost like anybody buying right now is almost like a forced buyer, I guess. I don't know, it doesn't make any sense to me. Let's go, let's look at inventory really quick. Now inventory here you can see is flat previous from the previous month. It's actually down from 7,000 last year. So last year in September, we had 7,000. This year we have 6,700. I think it's more just flat. I think they pulled this a little bit early is my personal opinion. And it's about flat. It doesn't matter. The point is, is that active listings are going up 
even though they're showing inventory is flat. Why is that? Well, because active listings are going under contract less and they count inventory that's under contract as active inventory. Well, it's not really inventory if it's under contract, in my opinion. So when you look at active listings, active listings are actually going up. This is, again, relatively speaking, this is the best time to buy this year. You've seen a softening in prices. You're seeing comps come through showing softer prices. And you've got obliterated contract volume. And you've got the highest inventory we've seen all year long. So if you are buying, this is a good buying window. Last thing I want to show you here is this right here. This is why I am just so mortified about, it looks to me like there are more FHA mortgages now than there have been in the past few months. Now, I hope this is self-reported, so this is realtors marking it as an FHA sold. It's not always the case. This is not the best data. But if FHA mortgages are trending up right now, God help us all, this is not gonna end well. And that's the other thing is if you're in an area where people are putting 3.5% down on a mortgage, okay, and you move in next to them, even if you're not losing your job and they lose theirs, chances are they're not going to be able to rent it because their mortgage payment is going to be nowhere near what rent could go for in that place. And nobody's going to buy it for that price because they won't get the return they need to get with rents. Therefore, they'll have to sell at a much lower valuation. That is where the risk is in this market is in highly leveraged neighborhoods. So look around at your neighbors and think, are these people buying in cash or putting 20, 30, 40% down? Or are these people putting 3.5% down? Because if you're in a neighborhood where everybody's putting 3.5% down, then you are at risk for massive losses on your house. Now, that's counterintuitive because chances are that's a lower-priced house. I think the risk is in lower-priced housing. Higher-priced houses, for now, don't appear to be risky to me. Could that change in the future? Sure, it could. But right now, it, it looks to me like if you've got a lot of cash, you're probably buying in a neighborhood that has cash, it's less risky in general. That doesn't mean that prices won't go down, but just in general, there's less risk of forced selling and there's less risk for you to be forced to sell. You can hold on to that house for a long time. And that's why, you know, going through an economic storm like we're going through, it's much better to be in a place where you don't have to sell. Don't be around people that are going to be forced sellers. If, if this is informing you about the housing market here in Nashville, please click like. Uh, it does help the algorithm. I certainly do appreciate it. And with that, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day.